Let's start by seeing what happens when we put the burner on low. The hot air balloon begins to rise, at first slowly, and then faster and faster. The graph at the top left shows the velocity of the balloon as it changes with time. Upward velocities are positive. Downward velocities are negative. It reaches maximum velocity at around 10 seconds and comes to a stop by 20 seconds. The acceleration of the hot air balloon is greatest when the slope of this graph is highest. The balloon is accelerating upward for the first 10 seconds and then accelerating downward while still moving upward for the final 10 seconds. As you may know, when velocity and acceleration are in the same direction, an object speeds up. When they are in opposite directions, the object slows down. The position graph at right shows how high above the ground the balloon is at different times. The position of the balloon can never be negative. That would be beneath the ground. The slope of this position versus time graph is equal to the speed of the balloon. Notice that the slope starts out fairly flat and is greatest at 10 seconds when the velocity is greatest. Then the slope begins to decrease again to zero. This represents the balloon slowing to a stop. Let's turn on the free body diagram for the balloon. Now we can see the forces acting on the balloon. An upward lift force is provided by the buoyancy of the hot air in the balloon. A downward gravitational force is provided by the weight of the balloon, the payload, and most importantly, the air in the balloon. When we heat the air in the balloon, its density decreases and the balloon weighs less. The lift force doesn't change much. After all, the balloon doesn't change size by very much, so it is still displacing the same volume of outside air. But since the weight is less, the lift force can exceed the weight. This is why the balloon rises when we add heat. The net or total force acting on the balloon is the lift force minus the weight. In other words, it is the amount by which the lift force exceeds the weight. If the net force is positive, pointing upwards, the balloon accelerates upward, as predicted by Newton's second law. If instead the net force is negative, meaning the weight is greater than the lift force, the balloon accelerates downward. Let's watch the lift force, weight force, and their difference, the net force, as we add heat to the balloon. You'll see the net force vector is represented in gray. See it grow and shrink positively and negatively. The balloon first accelerates upward, then downward, while still moving upward the whole time. Hot air balloons have vents at the top. The vents allow us to remove air from the interior. This air is replaced by colder air, and the overall weight of the air in the balloon increases. This allows the weight of the balloon to exceed the lift force. The balloon can accelerate downward and begin to descend. This is how we can allow the balloon to land. What happens if we have a higher payload mass at launch? Newton's second law says that the acceleration achieved by an object is the net force acting on it divided by the mass. More inertial mass, like a higher payload, means smaller acceleration for a given net force. Let's watch what happens when we try to take off with a higher payload. See how the slope of the velocity graph is smaller, and the maximum speed we reach is therefore smaller as well? This is a consequence of Newton's second law. Play around with these relationships and see what you can discover.